So Io then is moving in Jupiter's magnetic field. And it turns out two things happen that make Io even more bizarre, make even more bizarre environment for poor Io to live in. So as you remember then, Io is very volcanically active. So I can just sort of go on Io here, maybe draw a volcano like this. And you would imagine a bunch of the sulfur and maybe some sodium coming out, giving, giving Io all that yellowish color. But now what happens is so the sodium and this sulfur that come out, they're exploded very high up above Io, giving the planet actually sort of a very tenuous little atmosphere here. So I'll sort of draw that in yellow. But then what happens, so what is this? Well, the atmosphere is, like I said, the atmosphere is going to be the sodium, excuse me, the sulfur and the sodium that are up there. And what can happen, of course, is um, something I'm not fully understanding, but some charged particles from Jupiter or definitely, once again, the awful solar wind that comes in. Remember the solar wind, the protons and electrons, protons and electrons come in. They can come in and actually hit the sodium and the sulfur in Io's atmosphere and ionize it. So all that means for us here is that the sodium and the sulfur in Io's atmosphere can become charged. And so instead of just being molecules like this, they can, that can be charged, maybe plus, 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 they can be charged like that. And what happens then? Well, what happens is as Jupiter rotates, of course, Jupiter has that very fast 10-hour rotation around its axis, is rotating like this. What happens is the magnetic field here of Jupiter gets swept along with Jupiter as it rotates. So if you can imagine all these big blue lines are just going to get swept around the planet as it rotates like this. So maybe like this magnetic field line is going to appear here and then here then maybe up here, and it starts sweeping around. And of course, at some point, this magnetic field line is going to slam into Io like that as it sort of sweeps around, sweeps around. And what that's going to do, when the magnetic field encounters the charges in Io's atmosphere, it's going to drag the atmosphere around Io's orbit with this circulating magnetic field. And so what you end up getting, poor Io has to sort of live in the mess of its own atmosphere. And so what will happen is its whole sort of orbit becomes smeared with its own atmosphere, sort of going around like this. So there's sort of what Io's orbit is going to look like. It's just this big mess now. Let me just sort of say that the orbit here just sort of becomes a mess of its own atmosphere. And so what this is called also, it has a name here. This is called the plasma torus that basically sort of surrounds the orbit that Io travels in. But it's a mess of its own atmosphere that was swept off by Jupiter's magnetic field. So poor Io here has its atmosphere of the sodium and the sulfur. That gets swept into the orbit around Jupiter that Io falls in. So Io is constantly having to go through its own atmosphere. And yes, some of these charged particles that end up in this plasma torus slam into the surface of Io, um, causing further disruption and so on of the surface. But when they slam into the surface, they can also cause these beautiful colors to come off of Io as well. So there's like some red colors coming off and some green colors coming off and some blue colors coming off of Io because it's slamming into the mess of its own atmosphere. So yeah, believe it or not. That's what's happening. Lastly, then, the poor plant. So these colors will come out here, which are always sort of nice to see, but just, you know, for no sort of calm, nice reason, of course. And then the last thing that happens when you're in this magnetic field is that I showed you in the last sort of simulation here. Just remember, moving a magnetic field, well, there's going to have to be some sort of current. Okay, so is there a current through Europa? Yes, believe it or not. So because Europa, this planet here, is against moving in this magnetic field, there's something like 400,000 volts develop across Europa. Now you can contrast that maybe with a 1.5 volt battery you put in your flashlight or maybe your mobile phone operates on 6 volts, 400,000 volts is developed across poor Europa. And what that causes to happen is a stream of electrons. Remember that current that's supposed to happen that made the light bulb light up in this simulation, a current 
starts to flow here between Europa and Jupiter, something like this is the current in here, uh, pushed to the tune of 400,000 volts and actually 5 million amps. Okay, so the, the biggest amp here that you you're normally encounter in your life is about 400 amps, and that's what you use to start your car with. That's what your battery uses to start your car with. Well, there's 5 million amps flowing between sort of the pole of Io and Jupiter and back again. So there's just this circulating charge going between the two, and you can just imagine a bunch of electrons and that sort of thing in there. And this is called... And so this 5 million amps that's flowing between Io and Jupiter also has a name. It's called flux tube. There you go. And so you just have to take a little pause here and just think of poor Io, just because it's sort of orbiting Jupiter here. It's always hot due to gravity, the intense gravity that it feels from being near the planet here. It's basically, um, you know, uh, in the mess of its own atmosphere. And number three, it's basically being electrocuted. And I'm not going to say that the electrocution is having anything to do with it, the, the heat of Io or anything like that, but there's these intense currents flowing through it. And some of these currents, as they flow, they also sort of emit radio waves coming out like this that are detectable, such so as sort of noise, I would think, think from outer space. So here's sort of a summary shot of the whole situation here that if you were Io, of course, some of the key features that we just covered here, and we're sort of at our end of covering what it is. You're in this enormous planet here that has sort of like the size of 11 Earth radii here. Jupiter has lightning on it like, like that. There's raging winds on there. There's excess heat coming out. It has the great red spot or the great red eye. It has a bunch of layered clouds that it goes on. Uh, as you get deeper and deeper, the high pressures cause liquid metallic hydrogen to come out, which creates this enormous magnetic field. And then you get the poor moon Io right here that has a bunch of volcanoes on it. And what happens is here's this um, plasma torus here. That's basically the atmosphere of Io being drug all the way around Jupiter because of Earth, Jupiter's swirling magnetic field. And here's the flux tube right here, which is just a bunch of electrons that flow between the poles of Jupiter through the planet to the tune of something like 5 million amps. And, and you can just sort of see the rest of it. We are going to see auroras on Jupiter as well. There's radio emission coming out of the whole thing. And that's what it's like to be Io. And I took this from uh, a nice book that I like to read about the solar system. This professor, Kenneth Lang, just is a, is a brilliant astronomy writer. This is one of his summary shots here. And I pulled this off the uh, internet as well. I believe it's the Wikipedia page on the moon Io itself. But you can see all of the relevant issues here, a nice graphic. Here's that flux tube, that 5 million amps flowing through Europa in Jupiter's poles. And this hazy stuff you see going around is the plasma of Io's own atmosphere that, of course, Io has to go slam into again, causing colors to appear on the surface of Io. And there you go. So Io is quite the, quite the moon. Uh, very unusual environment that it lives in. And so we'll leave it at that and then move on towards Europa.